The Adulting with ADHD podcast is not a substitute for medical advice. Please see a medical professional if you think you have ADHD or if you have questions about your current treatment. To support this podcast or to access the podcast archives, visit patreon.com slash adulting with ADHD. This is the Adulting with ADHD podcast, self-empowerment for people with ADHD. Hi guys, just wanted to pop in here and set up this episode for you a bit. This is a wonderful conversation I had with Sari Solden. Um, as most of you guys know, Sari is a psychotherapist who has counseled adults with ADHD for over 30 years. She is the author of the books Women with Attention Deficit Disorder, Journeys Through Adulthood, and she's the co-author of A Radical Guide for Women with ADHD. In this episode, we will be talking about radical self-acceptance for women with ADHD. I really hope you enjoyed as much as I did. And the first question I had here was, well, in your own words, what does it mean to practice radical self-acceptance when you're a woman with ADHD? Right. Well, I guess it goes down to a deeper issue of what radical acceptance is, which isn't really only about what I have in the book. It's radical acceptance, I think, goes back to just basic Buddhist principles and Mm. then Marsha Linehan uses it in, in dialectic behavioral therapy and especially in acceptance um, commitment therapy, which is a great yes. approach to, I think, all these things and mindfulness. Mm-hmm. I think at one point they all started to coalesce and I didn't take my approach from them. But at one point when there seemed to be a lot written about this, I recognized that my approach to women with executive function problems really aligns well with this. And so then I started looking a little bit more into those principles. So so I'll just talk about the deepest idea about yeah. radical acceptance, which I think can be applied very well to effective treatment for women with ADHD is this idea of the difference between pain and suffering. This is really the basis for radical acceptance that we all experience pain and adversity and difficulties in life. Some of them are acute, like from a loss. Some of them are chronic and even chronic pain. There's a lot of painful things in life that are difficult to deal with, but they become suffering by what we do to ourselves because of the pain, the way we try to run away from the pain or say it's not fair or disavow ourselves from what's happening to the uh with so acceptance radical acceptance means to accept the reality of painful things that happen to all of us and not add to it and create suffering by wishing it away and saying it's not fair and trying to avoid it and separate from it those are really hard concepts to get but i think it applies to women with executive function difficulties because women with these kind of challenges have the mindset at the beginning that they're just going to get over this, that they want to do whatever they can to fix themselves, that this isn't okay, that they have to push harder, push through. And that just creates more self-hate and more shame and more avoidance of getting out there and leading a meaningful life. So radical acceptance means just accepting that you have differences in your brain wiring and brain chemistry. That's not a description of who you are as a person and untangling those two things so that you can deal with that chronic difficulty as well as then go on to lead a fulfilling, meaningful life is really the basis of especially this latest work. Yeah, that's interesting you say that because, well, you know this, that recently I've switched my episodes to focus more on hormones. And so it seems like that's especially a time where you really have to accept reality and you can't control it. Can you talk a little bit about, well, I mean, you really just did. You just did, but, you know. Well, no, I can expand on me. You're right. Hormones is, is an actual thing that happens to your body and we have to be informed about it first of all so we can manage it as well as we can i'm not when i say acceptance i don't mean resignation giving up giving in you know just uh, being lost in pain actually studies show that it's the opposite when you have chronic pain or chronic struggles the more you accept it the less you'll feel the terrible pain that terrible suffering comes from just can't stand it get over it it's not real so hormones uh, 
and ADHD, get the information, do what you can to modify your environment, to help your brain, do whatever you can in that area. But then if you understand what's happening with your hormones, whether it's, oh, this is happening premenstrually, this is happening perimenopausally, then you don't, first of all, have to be scared that this means awful things yeah. about having Alzheimer's it doesn't mean, yeah. you know, that, you know, you're not scared because you get more depressed before your period. You have to understand that so that you can, you know, normalize it and expect it, prevent it, not plan so many things during that time. So really working with your brain, that means accepting it and understanding it. So hormones are just another part of the whole piece. You kind of answered this before, but all these ideas were coalescing and that was how you came up with this book. Uh, was there any moment where you're just like, this is it, I have to, did, you, did something just spur you to write this book? Well, there was two things. There was like what happened when I started thinking about it this way, which was many years before that. And I think it was actually in a lecture about acceptance commitment therapy when I heard uh, the approaches to chronic pain and chronic struggles described in the way that I just mentioned. And since then, for years, I was really conceiving of this idea that you can accept your brain and work on that at a parallel track of understanding that is not all of who you are and not defining yourself by those difficulties. Well, when I started working with Michelle Frank, yeah. Dr. Frank, who I met in 2013 at Detroit conference at a conference, and she joined my practice, I think maybe working together so closely as therapists and as women with ADHD, we'd have plenty of time to, to, to talk about what works and what doesn't. And we were both experiencing the same thing as having these amazing women clients who we could see were just as whole women and with all these great strengths, as well as understanding their great challenges, as well as saying that whole, whole picture meant also putting in whatever core traits that we were delighted to be a part of, you know, with these women, but yet they couldn't see themselves at all. They were so distorted in their view of themselves. So we started, you know, I think the synergy of the two of us working together and talking about this and being women with ADHD made us excited to think about helping people move on to not just understanding their brains or even some of the shame that I had described earlier or identity issues, but that we wanted them to move further into uh, after being brave and understanding the dangers they've learned about differences to learn to actually be entitled to lead full, meaningful, bold, bright lights to move more what we call the center of the stage and, and not have to stay in the background and let themselves explore how to be seen and heard and not feel so invisible, not hide and pretend and to let themselves rise up and take power in their relationships and in their life. So I think it was the synergy of us working together that helped us with this book. Awesome. And while you were talking, it reminded me of something. It's a personal anecdote while I was working through your book. <laughs> you mm -hmm. had a part, I think it was the second chapter, and it was, you know, identifying the messages that you hear around you growing up. Yeah. And I don't remember a lot. Uh, I don't have a lot of memories of growing up. It's just, a lot of it's just gone. And I do remember <laughs> judging other people, like all these messages that were living in my head, I remembered bright and clearly. And I, of course, I must have gotten them from somewhere, but it made me, it made me realize how much there is this internalized self-loathing that goes with it that I wasn't. Yeah. And that's what I, I wrote about in my first, some of that in that book was referencing what I had written about in that yeah. first book so many years ago what I call she messages, yes. and you messages. And yeah, and, yeah. and it's, it's really comes from women with ADHD, the first book, because, you know, I conceived of this whole thing from the beginning, from my background in minority mental health, because, and now it's all coming yes. full circle because the way I like to talk about this is neurodiversity. And it just comes from the larger idea of minorities or diversity, because that's where we, as minorities, any minority learns about, takes from the culture in general, absorbs what's valued and valuable. And often people in these smaller groups to compare themselves to that and then internalize these negative yeah. views. And I think that's what happens to women with ADHD, even if they can't remember specifically, right. oh, <laughs> their family say something negative. You learn it from every ad, every media thing, every 
you know, girlfriend, every institution you're involved with, you get these very subtle messages that are so deeply internalized. I mean, it's unbelievable that women in their 20s I work with now are still feeling the way women who grew up in the 50s yeah. feel about what their job should be and what happens if they're not good at it and the judging themselves by Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so that's been my biggest takeaway so far, but I'm only on chapter two. So there's a lot. To and that was another, well, chapter two in the beginning, you know, that's why we wrote this. Well, first of all, we talk about neurodiversity right mm -hmm. off the bat about radical acceptance really of all brains. Um, and then as therapists, I studied, you know, systems a lot. And so a lot of what you understand about family systems is to the extent that you can feel that you can be different than other people, you can be healthier, that you can still be close to people and be different. And for women with ADHD who grew up not understanding that it's okay to be different, these wounds of feeling invisible and different, you know, stay with them for a long time. That's what drives so much of their pain later on, this idea that being different is bad. And they learn that early on by how people in their family might not have put them down, but maybe talked about other people who were different or didn't value diversity in other ways. Yeah, or talked badly about themselves, which is something um, <clears throat> terrible. Yeah. yeah, I had so many, I've had women clients say, I don't know why my daughter, you know, it, it has such low self-esteem. And then this woman would be calling herself a right. slob or saying bad things about herself. And so we we learn, we as women with differences or difficulties can model to our children, not just what it means to be perfect. You don't have to pretend that you can say, show them what you do when you struggle and that everybody struggles. Yeah. I, I come across that a lot in my, my parenting material of the importance of that <clears throat> and the importance of your children seeing you modeling um, how you respond to imperfect situations and how important it is. Exactly. Yeah. Because so many, uh, women say, oh, I hope my kids don't have this, or I would feel bad if they have this, or how can I keep them from feeling this, you know, difficulty? So that's more of that radical acceptance, you know, causing all that other suffering versus saying, okay, I have these struggles. This is what I do. And, you know, we all are different. We all have good, uh, you know, strengths. We all have difficulties. So help each other. Yeah. And, and I love how the movies that are coming out now for children also are embracing those ideas, because that's kind of Children are learning a lot through the movies they're watching. So it's encouraging after all those, like you said, all the negative messages that you come across of it's, yeah. I think it is, I am starting to see a difference now for the first time when I'm talking to a lot of young women are interviewing me now. A lot of young women must have all come at age at the same time because they're rediscovering this book, and you know, the first yes. book. And I hear so many more younger people, probably because of the way younger millennials maybe embrace diversity yeah. more and accept differences more that I've had many more young clients now say, you know what, I, I told my supervisor that this is how I process information and I need help. And, or I told them that this is what I need and they help me. I mean, I never heard that. And I'm hearing that more and more learning to just describe how you operate and what you need. And I never heard that before. I'm hearing that much more yeah. now. These days I've found myself needing quicker access to therapy from the safety and comfort of my home. This is why I started using BetterHelp for my immediate therapy needs. They will assess your situation and match you up with a licensed professional therapist, one who you'll likely start communicating with in 24 hours or less. It's more affordable than traditional therapy and financial aid is available. You can do it through text or chat if you don't like phone calls or video appointments to get started and to save 10 percent, go to betterhelp help.com slash adhd adulting that is one thing i've really enjoyed about watching the younger generations come up is <clears throat> they're not afraid to talk about their feelings that's something we never did growing <laughs> up it was like huge taboo yeah. so yeah it's it's very interesting to see that happening is, yeah. i wanted to go back to what you were talking about with act because i I don't know if that's a common practice among therapists, but I remember hearing that a lot when I was going through therapy in the beginning was the, the ACT therapy. So among therapists, is that something that's commonly um, used? And uh, also I'm pairing that with, <clears throat> excuse me, radical self-acceptance also. You can answer both. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's common. I mean, it's funny. I mean, there's a contemporary psychotherapy that has to do with the things I just mentioned that see things in that way, which have to do with the way I, my core principles that I teach of person over pathology and self over 
symptoms and seeing a person whole. And I think that's one way of certain kinds of therapists understanding this more rooted in like Tara yes. Brock who wrote uh, mm -hmm. Radical Acceptance or, or Stephen Hayes. And, you know, there's other people who are much more cognitive oriented when it comes to yeah. ADD. And I think there's two different schools of thought. It's funny, when I started teaching therapists, uh, I, I think there's a lot of therapists who aren't ADD specialists who actually see clients yes. in the way I'm describing. I, mm -hmm. And I think that, and they say, yeah, of course. But when I talk to a lot of people who might describe themselves as ADHD specialists, they don't so much. They've been taught more about uh, yes. tools, strategies, <laughs> academia. I think there's a long way to start thinking, okay, now we have to move back from that alone to help people see the deep wounds and complexity, especially for women, because they weren't diagnosed early and understand the effect on your sense of self and, and, you know, not treat it just like some academic kind of organizational yes. issue. Uh, it is all that, but the kind of person versus a separate kind of client versus a person who struggles, you know, with executive function has, a, and as a whole person, instead of seeing them as a separate class of person. So we just really want to work. Yeah. On you perfectly <laughs> described my, my experience. I, I mean, my therapist didn't even know I had ADHD and, um, you know, I had been misdiagnosed yeah. bipolar when I met her, but, but the way she had treated uh -huh. me, her treatment still was so effective, even though she had no idea I had ADHD because she was using the ACT principles and, you know, all that. And so wow. it's just, I walked that's, out. You're lucky. And that's, yeah. and that's interesting. And it was just because when I try to teach therapists, you know, who are going to work with ADD, this kind of stuff, I said, well, yeah, <laughs> I know that. But, but so it's easier, I think, to learn about ADHD once you have that general view of people like you have that experience of versus you know, some people who just think they know about ADHD, they might know about the brain, but they don't know about human beings as much. And we have to sort of, you know, they're not different kind of clients. They're a person who, not an ADD yeah. person, you know, you're a person, there's a person. And then, you know, then we can see what your particular struggles are. Now, knowing if you have ADHD and what kind of medication you need and how to help your brain is one route, but that's not. Yeah, right. I agree. And you know, for, for anyone listening, if you, if you have a therapist like mine that doesn't really specialize in ADHD, um, I was able to supplement that with ADHD coaching. Yes. I was just going to say that, that that's a great, yeah. a great combination. Now it'd be nice for everybody to know everything eventually. <laughs> yeah. And, and it seems that way for a lot of yeah. medical specialties. Like, I think we've talked about this in the past, but just like you have the OBGs and then you have the psychs yeah. and you, you just wish Talk you could melt. Right. You know, that's the whole thing about wholeness in, in the medical profession or in, well, I talk about curing, healing instead of curing. And uh, healing is when there's something that you just need to, um, this really means to restore to wholeness, to help people have a sense of well-being and not just to get over who they are, not just to, you know, throw some medicine at it, fix it. Fix it. I mean, yeah. you need to help your brain, yeah. but in the, in the service of you as a human being to lead a great life and to make it easier for you, but not just as, as, as the whole package. And so it's like, a, yeah, it's a different humanistic view of human beings, I guess. You're lucky that you had found somebody who, who uh, well, maybe because they didn't have ADHD, they weren't trying to fix yeah. you of it. Um, so we just want to understand it is yeah it's, i'm becoming yeah. very sensitized yeah. to this idea of path out how people pathologize themselves you can just hear it people who have strokes people yes. who have a million other things don't do that to themselves but adhd has a lot of stigma and misunderstanding and stereotypes that make even the person themselves feel embarrassed you know i've had nuclear scientists i've had people who are so smart and so competent but then they're just laughing at themselves because they can't do something simple but, you know, those people who can do those things can't do what they do. So it's easy to develop a narrative about yourself where you just are looking at your challenges and not all of yourself. Absolutely. And to circle back, I am very lucky. And I will tell you, I found that therapist after office hours, I was frantically calling somebody because I finally realized I needed a therapist. And, and it was just wow. luck. She was the only one who answered after hours because she's a professor and she works after hours. And 
it was just <gasps> sheer luck and i've been seeing her for more than a decade Oh, wow. You are lucky. It is hard to find it. That was another question you had. I mean, it's, and you know, the answer to it now, oh, yeah. really trust yourself and find somebody who, with whom will work with you collaboratively and not from some kind of, you know, patronizing yeah. kind of characterologic view of you that you just need to do this or do that. Uh, you want somebody who, you know, who you feel sees you and values you and 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 can so you can internalize that mm -hmm. but but someone who also doesn't minimize your difficulties and sometimes someone will just focus on your strengths and that's great but you also need somebody who can help you understand your real challenges and accept them like we're talking about and work through them and get help for them modify your life to fit it but uh, so you want someone who sees all of you absolutely and actually I I, I did have a situation, it was, it was a psychiatrist where, um, and in my case, I just knew it wasn't going to work just uh, mm -hmm. by the things he was asking of me that I was unable to mm -hmm. do for him. And it was more of a mm -hmm. philosophical difference, I think. And mm -hmm. so like, can you tell me a little bit? What yeah, you I actually, so I, I now know I, I was a compulsive binge drinker for a time mm -hmm. and um, he had sent me to treatment um, to AA mm -hmm. And it just wasn't working. The the stuff the program wasn't working for me, even though I I took some value out of it. But to sum mm -hmm. up a long story short, I wasn't going mm -hmm. through the steps quickly enough for him, in my opinion. <laughs> in my um, in his opinion, yeah, he, he had someone reporting to him that said I wasn't working the program, and it's a whole wow. story. But that's so shaming and pathologizing of I me mean, of all things, you know, to now be judging how quickly you know. doing this. And I'm doing it wrong, even though I was like, earnest, I was earnestly going, I was going to meetings every day and I was being really earnest. And, but the good side to that story is I did find someone else who took me as a whole person and she's the one who ended up diagnosing me with ADHD. So there's a happy ending, but I followed my gut. I was like this red flag, red flag. I got to. Yeah. Well, know. that's what, that's the important thing to follow your gut. Yeah. You know, when you have a don't and then you give over your idea or you know your power to somebody else and you think well no you want to be open-minded maybe you don't know everything but if if you start feeling worse and worse about <laughs> these things and not yeah. if you're not doing treatment right you know in quotations right. I had one psychiatrist tell my client a long time ago like such a wrong message in so many ways this is years ago but he said so go home and you have ADD take go home, take this pill. And when you clean your house, you're cured. Whoa. <laughs> I mean, you couldn't have more wrong statements <laughs> and something, but the, you know, at the beginning, that's Ooh. what we thought, you know, yeah. like if cleaning your house was the, it was a sign, you know, was the goal and then you'd be cured and the pill was all you need. Ouch. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you don't want to be hurt by the treatment itself. In other words, is what you're saying a lot when I agree with. You. Yeah. And, and to tack onto that, it's it's just so much it's so wonderful that we know so much more now than we we did know and it's just i'm set up in a lot better place than for example my um parents generation like we're just set up so much you know better than they were cuz we have more information to work off of no it's really true i'm just yeah. beginning to actually see a change in the effect so on women with adhd so there must be a greater amount of providers who understand things in a different way and you know when I see I see Palooza just happened I yeah. mean there's a there's a much more broader reach of professionals who understand people at a diff different level now you know we had to move from a character just in order to move from a character description of ADHD in the old days to a medical description to get it validated we you know that's a pathological yeah. description in and of itself just because we had to take it seriously but now we're moving away from that luckily to less pathologizing now that we know it exists and I really hope that we just get away from the word ADHD it's become completely meaningless and yes I I usually only say neurodiversity or executive function challenges now because it's more descriptive and for some reason ADHD is just a punchline in a lot of ways and it's yeah. so unfair and not really descriptive of the nuances of everybody with just different kinds of brain struggles. If we have two minutes, I'll say that I'm thinking of it now more because I have yeah. a client who's got diabetes yeah. and it's really helpful in this radical acceptance to understand that, okay, she's got diabetes and it's very difficult to live with. It's a chronic condition. Yeah. It requires a lot of management, 
but she knows now when she's in a certain range, she knows like, okay, that's a red flag. I have to do this. And so we started talking about things like, okay, well, we just were, this is a red flag. Now we, you know, we need a dopamine boost. Yes. You know, so I think about it now, like, okay, what's happening? Why am I doing this? What's the red flag here? And, you know, what kind of dopamine boost do I need? And just thinking that more like well, hormonally, really, like yeah. this is out of whack now. And it's not about me. It's just, I'm out of whack. And what can I do? So like last night I was having a really hard time writing a report. I mean, I just does I usually use music, many different kinds of music and you know, from jazz to classical. Last night, I put for the first time in my life, I had to put on Led Zeppelin. <laughs> I love it. But I knew, like, okay, I got to have something to really. <laughs> it was serious. Now you were. It was serious. My brain was not turning on, you know. So, but I know. And then the other day, I was messing up dates a whole bunch and telling people the wrong dates. And I said, okay, that's a red flag. That because I don't usually do that, and it means that I'm too overloaded, and then I have to really look at it. So understanding I have to stay in this range. So people really looking at themselves like real, this is radical acceptance. This is real and it's not fun. It's miserable and whatever it is, you can, it's not unpainful when I say radical acceptance. It just means we're not going to add to it. Like, oh, this isn't fair. I can't stay on this. I got to get over this. I can't live like this. That's when you add suffering to the actual pain of chronic difficulties. Yeah. And I, I think that's a lot why, why this works is because you're, you're not erasing that it's there. You're, 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 you're going through it and accepting it instead of just completely um, denying its existence. Well, it doesn't work. You know, it's yeah. exhausting and it doesn't, the bottom line with radical acceptance is the other way doesn't work. And I remember when I first started talking about radical acceptance at conferences, I had this slide, you know, about these laundry. Uh, and because I had couples, they'd paid like for years to come to couples therapy. Finally, they got a, a laundry yes. service. <laughs> <laughs> they accepted. They're like, no one's going to do the laundry. <laughs> Um, I, I have a laundry service. I'm going to, I'm going to normalize that right now. Um, you should, you know, and you like know. for women, it's all culturally based. I, all the women, nobody would order groceries, you know, before the pandemic, I know. even though same services are available. Yeah. Now it's culturally approved yes. and everybody does it. Yes. I was doing it way before it was cool. Just for the record. I mean, it's yeah, the best my thing. My clients wouldn't. You yeah. Know, so for the women who wouldn't, cause they felt shame. Oh, oh. my sister, I'll say people were saying, you know, but now. Yeah. Well, so much of this is culturally determined, the shame we feel. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I, I did come up with a few questions for a lightning round if you're up for oh, it. That sounded like so much fun. Yeah. I, I, I've i never done one of those. So what's the point of it? I look like fun. Yeah, I've never done one either. You're the first. Um, <laughs> uh oh Well, I think... I, <laughs> I've seen it on TV. Was I've seen it, but I don't yeah. really. I've never done it. I, I was thinking of Stephen Colbert, yeah. and I was giggling because yeah. I, I I remember him doing that sometimes. Like he would just ask someone just some random questions. Right. So I just googled lightning round, and it's a thing. Oh. So I I just oh. pulled a few out off of. And, and it's like what I what I like or what I resonate with or what I prefer. Yeah. Or yeah, and you just okay. pick one, and you don't even have to explain it. You just pick it, That's and good. and then okay. and then we chuckle, and then I ask you the other one. So, okay. uh, but man, if I had known about that Zeppelin, I could have really gone to town with that. <laughs> Cause I know that feeling I did that for me, I, I was in the garage this weekend and for me, it was Lady Gaga. It was like, okay, oh, yeah. the, the usual stuff isn't working. Like usually I do a podcast and it's like, all right, yeah. Lady Gaga, here we go. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but knowing that and knowing you have a, re I guess having a repertoire of things mm -hmm. that work for you is what's important, you know? Okay. Yeah. This is fun. Yeah. Lightning round. Okay. Uh -oh. Here we go. Um, cats or dogs? Oh yeah. Dogs. Okay. Um, outside of working hours, texting or talking? Texting. hundred percent. hundred percent. Yeah. I totally get that. <laughs> uh, favorite city in the world? Oh, this is an either or. Uh oh. Right. Yeah, you're right. But uh -oh. Um, uh oh. Okay. Uh okay. Well, uh, I can give you an either or. Hold on. Oh, give me a couple either or because I have a few. Um, you know. So. Yeah, West Coast or East Coast. Oh. Does that mean? <laughs> equal. Yeah. Okay. Equal. And also, you know, pre-pandemic, post-pandemic. Used to be New York City, but oh. now I don't want to go into the city right now, so yeah. it's harder. Yeah. yeah, that that's a good enough answer. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, this one was 
this one was interesting. Would you rather be able to speak oh. every language or talk to animals? Mm. Wow. Speak every language? I wouldn't want to speak it. Talk to animals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Animals are cool. Okay. I like animals. And then uh, just your, your favorite holiday or your, your favorite time of year. Oh, well, I hate holidays really <laughs> because I mean, yeah. no, it's terrible. Like I, that's like a big admission. Like when Biden was talking the other day, I have to say, you know, I, I felt like, oh, everything he was saying, we want to get back to. I don't want to do those things. So I felt really bad. Like, I don't, I hate barbecues. I hate I know, right? bad parties. <laughs> so this is a big admission, you know, like, I don't want to get back to that. But um, yeah. yeah, my favorite, uh, what was it? Favorite holiday or what? You can say like time of year if you don't like holidays. Oh, time of year. Yeah. I love, um, I love the fall. Same. Yeah. I love the fall, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Hands down. Thanksgiving. Um, as long as I don't have to give an event or go to one. I like, yes. I like the seasons though <laughs> yes absolutely i feel the same way um it's an add thing huh? uh, it must be although my father just he is antisocial, so he's just like no i don't want any he's been in his yeah. element the whole time um i know i did that whole workshop the other day uh the speech i gave for pandemic for the pan, yes whatever the, uh, for the was about post pandemic Pandemic transitions for women with ADHD because the hidden secret is that many introverted inattentive ADHD felt a great deal of relief from all those social pressures. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. I was going to tell the listeners about that, the ADHD women's palooza. Um, I do want to catch that. So did, you did um, do the topic of transitioning after? I did. I did a post pandemic transition, you know, yeah. because I don't want people to feel guilty or confused that a lot of, for a lot of women, there's been, besides all the other terrible things and for everybody. For the segment of women, there was a lot of relief and lessening of pressure of all these logistics, coordination, picking up, driving off, schedules, blah, 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 uh, getting dressed, uh, giving events, going to events, all that stuff, party planning. Yes. So I'm giving a post, -pan I don't know when this is going to thing, but I decided to give a one day anyway, post pandemic transition workshop for us Ooh. to get together and talk about it, you know. Nice. Um, so uh, it's a secret that some women mm. have. Like, I don't want it. Or yeah. they're afraid or they don't really want to get back out there fully. So yeah. you should take away what's important to you after this year and what you don't want to go back to and, and be intentional about it. Love it. So where can the listeners um, keep in touch with you and hear about things like this workshop? Okay. Well, I mean, they can go to Sari. They can always email me at Sari at SariSolden.com. Okay. Or they can come to SariSolden.com, the website. Okay. Or I try to post things at ADHDRadicalGuy.com. That's our blog. So, yeah, you can write to me about any of these things. Okay, awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you, Sari, so much. It was a pleasure to have you. Oh, that was so much fun, Sarah. Yeah, thank thank you. you. All, All right. right. Bye. Bye-bye. I've always wondered if weighted blankets could help me with anxiety. During the pandemic, it was the perfect opportunity to find out. Ever since the first night I have slept with my weighted blanket, I have had very relaxing sleep. Don't deal with insomnia nearly as often. And at a point where I don't want to sleep without it, it is, it is that awesome. To find out which blanket I use, it's just so comfortable and so beautiful. Go to adultingwithadhd.com slash mosaic and you'll see my favorite one and there's many, many others to choose from.